Fiery Seeker. So here we are, November. Oof. This year has passed. Flu. Not necessarily with much ease. <laughs> Uranus did leave your anus. Went all the way into Taurus's. But now it's back in your zodiac. What is it doing to your love life? Why am I getting love life? This doesn't have to necessarily be. Well, of course, it affects everything. Let's see. Let's see what's up in November. What reaches its climax? Hmm, okay. <laughs> Did you not just hear me say climax? I said it a second before the world card fell. The embodiment of a climax. Perfection. Wholesome. Grand achievements. But now what? This is also the soulmate card. And yes, of course, it comes with the tower. Okay. First of all, here you are. See the eagle? In the Wheel of Fortune, we have all the fixed signs. Wait, what did I just say? Oh my god, I spoke to Scorpio. Okay, I haven't done Scorpio yet, but especially because I also have the tower um, on the table. Once I'll do Scorpio, watch it. And it is November, Scorpio season, life and death, intensity, the tower. Okay, the Big Bang. Major realization, major awakening, major um, completion. Something that is really going to shake, to shake you to your core. This does not have to be um, an exterior tower moment. This feels like a very inner, soulful um kind of awareness type of tower moment where you're just like <sighs> how did I miss that how I feel like it's similar to last month's reading I don't know even if it's yours potentially someone else's but if this was your reading last month and you can go and watch it because now we're in the midst of October so you might as well try to make the connections then this process reaches its climax throughout November. Uh, it will shake you to your core and it will burn down any leftovers of anything that is irrelevant to you. And you will emerge out of it. Look, she's like flying on top of the world in space and sky. And it feels like almost she like rose from in from within the tower, you know, this exploded and it's like, whoa, hi Jesus. Resurrection. Sorry, I had to make the connection. Come on. Christianity, don't be mad at me. I'm goofy in a nice way. Sometimes. Okay, so this is <laughs> sorry. This is major. Um Double major, major arcana, but very massive ones. Now, the world is a wonderful card. It can also, you know, speak of travel and expansion and success and career. It's also the soulmate card of the unity. Um, with the tower, it feels like we have to also, if not almost mostly, take the spiritual aspect of it, of the awakening, of the understanding, of the realizations, of the cycle being completed, of something being clicked inside of us it's gonna feel weird oh yeah five of cups it's gonna make you be like so interesting see how um okay some of you are far away from home look or someone else that you love is far away from you from your home um the tower here and see here this castle and this guy's kind of looking dwelling looking towards it from afar knowing what goes on there. Maybe far away the world. Maybe there's something that is going on um, at a distant 
either in your home if you're further from it or someone else that is close to you um, and they're having a tower moment and you're left to, to handle it from afar like there's nothing much you can do about it or maybe and that's that might be even more relevant um, major completion something being broken down that isn't relevant to you and you keep focusing some of you hopefully not but you will be focusing on this that is a loss what you've lost what was spilled right when this is actually a blessing and you will fail to see these two cups standing right behind you and you're turning your back to it so for those of you who are achieving a completion a um an end of a cycle and probably when a tower moment comes especially with the five of cups here insinuating for it some of us just wouldn't accept an ending or wouldn't accept that type of failure or loss or tower moment and because we would not let go then the universe kind of came and um smacked it to our face and the five of cups shows that you're still probably maybe potentially lingering over it but the two of cups is even a, a you know it's a, it's a stronger proof to the fact that this is good like you have the world here like now you're free and available to fly you know You have the world in your hands, Aries. Why are you looking at a small castle that you didn't really need? That you know wasn't good for you? That you know is part of your past? Let it crumble. Queen of Cups. Yes, someone is right behind you offering you this is very scorpio energy again maybe this is why i said scorpio hmm. someone with very with a lot of water energy um is offering you a cup of love and you're like mm, i just want to dwell on what i lost what is it with the martyr theme this month what's going on ah. Turn around, Aries. Look at what's right behind your shoulder. Someone pretty deep and pretty um, intense and charismatic and beautiful and sexy. This is the Queen of Cups. And intuitive and receptive and giving and interesting and fascinating. Hmm. It's a love reading, huh? Mm -hmm. No, I, I'm, I'm acting surprised because last few readings were not about love at all. I think you guys are like the first. <laughs> I mean, it's always about love in a way. We're making room for love. We're succeeding for love. All that jazz. But here it's like, hello. We got the feels. We got the feels, Marys. We got the feels. But there are some good feels offering themselves to you. Why are you indulging on the sadness? Do you feel good about that? Does that make you happy to indulge on sadness and what you can't have anymore? Let's keep going. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Hi, Eight of Wands. Yeah, you're going to wake up pretty fast. There's a lot of passion here. Queen of Cups and Eight of Wands, a lot of passion, especially with the Tower. There's also movement, potential travel. Either someone travels towards you or you're traveling towards them. It's fast. It's intense. Once you wake up from that uh, Five of Cups moment, once you see like what's right behind you, you're like, oh, hi, Queen of Cups. Hey, how are you doing? Like that, you're going to be like swooped towards it. Okay, this is good. Good. Oh. I missed this part. How did I miss this? These also... Oh yeah, definitely traveling. I now have the Six of Swords added to the party. The world, Eight of Wands, Six of Swords is no longer a question. So there's movement. Again, either someone is traveling towards you or you're traveling towards them. Definitely this month, definitely November, we have the world here as a completion, as an end of a cycle and a beginning of a cycle. It's also union. It's the card of the union and the soulmate. We have here the Queen of Cups, very soulful connection. 
And right after you have that understanding of who's right next to you or could be next to you, you're either traveling towards them or them traveling towards you. Now, Eight of Wands, Six of Swords, boom, Four of Pentacles. Be careful, Aries, that once you finally give yourself the go for movement, for passion, for change, for giving something a chance, whatever, be careful to not go back to your um, state of mind of feeling overprotective and kind of bring back your walls, right? You know, like you just let go of the walls. You just went into the fields, into the good fields. Don't be like, you know, your walls are going to scream. You're like, no, why are you breaking us? We want to keep existing. Everything wants to keep to, to, to keep existing. You know, it's nature. Even our walls, even our defense mechanism, the power of inertia just wants to keep going. Okay, so once you've challenged that, once you challenge these walls and they break down, here you are trying to hold to you know to hold on to the leftovers or, or build them anew. Now, building new walls, it's okay as long as it's not the same freaking walls that the universe had to smack you on the head in order to break them down. You getting my picture here? Don't um, feel threatened. Don't be cheap. Especially not with your emotion. Um, don't be overprotective. Um, do, do not look back at events from the past and compare and be like, oh, it happened then and it will happen then. No. No. Everything is being swept away with a giant wave right now. The wave of the Scorpio season. <laughs> okay. The waves of change, you know, they say the winds of change, add the waves of change to the winds of change. Nothing as is as it was. Nothing will be as it was. We are all really, really expanding and moving towards a higher frequency of existence. All humanity, okay? The month of October was very intense energy-wise. A lot of us, mostly the, the empaths and the psychics and the intuitives, even if you don't consider yourself spiritual or intuitive, but you're highly sensitive and you pick up on things, it affected us. It affected our body. It affected our balance. Some of us were either very tired or very confused and we were we kind of lost our balance, but it's only because the balance was off in the first place. Imagine the Pisa Tower, right? The Pisa Tower. And now it's being straightened. Now it's been the Pisa Tower for its entire life. Now that it's, it, it, it learned how to, to have its balance that way. And now that it's being straightened up, compared to that, it's feeling imbalanced, right? Because it's different. But it's acting much better and much stronger and much more stable. It just requires adjustment. Okay? So don't try to tilt it back, Aries. Don't try to tilt it back. All right, <laughs> let's keep going. Hey, Aries. Month of November, please. Okay, okay, all right. One, two, three, we'll keep it. So let's address the first that came up with facing up. Queen of Wands. Ooh, another queen on the table. Are you popular? Page of Pentacles and the Magician. Okay. And they're all very, very yellow. <laughs> I have a row that it's like completely gloomy and bluish, kind of. Blues and browns. And now it's like bright yellows. Like the sun is coming. Awareness is coming. Light is coming. Fire is coming. This is going to bring a lot of new energy and fun and excitement. Almost like something that inspires you to learn from. It's like a new energy that is much more vital and um, fiery and like we, we're going from the beginning of November that is very much in the feels. Okay, once we did that, you know, letting, letting all the um, leftovers being swept away by the waves, doing the movements or the decision or the going towards or the having something come towards you kind of thing. 
starting to hopefully build new walls, new walls, not holding on to the old walls. And this is the hint, the first hint of yellow, right? And Queen of Wands, Page of Pentacles, the Magician. Yeah, some of you are going to just really start having a lot of fun with something that had, it, it's like something has been around you and comes in waves, right? So there was a wave of it in, in, in around August, September, either someone you communicated with or something you were working on. It was at a peak. And then like September, October, end of September, October, it kind of went to like down the hill, like a valley, like being like, okay, the wave is coming and then it's it going, it comes and it goes, right? So there was a wave of it and, and around August and September, I'm saying Queen of Rods is Leo, Page of Pentacles, Virgo. And then went a little bit back and now November it's coming like, hi, I'm here. All right. The wave is like, hi, and you're like, hi, and it's very intense and safe, I want to say, because the Page of Pentacles, it doesn't, it, Page of Pentacles is kind of a safe character. He's not the guy or the gal to take too many risks. The Queen of Wands is very, very adventurous, very energetic, very lively. And it's almost like this combination here doesn't go against each other. It actually completes each other in a way. They're kind of balancing each other. And it's like they help each other like, okay, she was missing a little bit of the pentacles. He was missing a little bit of the, of the wands. She was missing a little bit of earth. He was missing a little bit of fire, okay? Or he or she, this could be both male and female. And then it's like they, they had it all on the table. Like she had it all on the table like the magician except for this. He had it all on the table like the magician, except for that. And then they're like meeting. It's like they're both just now have the missing element. And with this missing element, it's almost like, like imagine like a power couple, you know, that once it's like they're together, everything makes sense. And like her energy brings something to the table. His energy brings something to the table. His, his, hers, hers. No judgment here. Love is love. Um, and then the table is full with the elements that are needed in order to, bam, really make something happen with this life. Oh, you're the miss missing piece, right? Hmm. Lovely. Also, this could be that in the first row, you know how we have the Queen of Cups um, and the and the Five of Cups uh, gentleman is kind of turning his back at her. Another narrative could be that this is the person from your past that you're turning your back at them just to face the Queen of Wands, okay? Because this person with the tower here potentially brought a lot of drama into your life, a lot of, a lot of stormy dramas into your life and now you've completed that and like in november there's a feeling of com complete completion completion with the world and moving away from it with the eight of wands and the six of swords establishing new um boundaries okay you can't go through that boundary anymore no you can't do that anymore you can't try to push through anymore enough and once you set those boundaries, once you stand up for yourself, then there is room for that Queen of Wands or Page of Pentacles. It's another narrative. I like to have the Magician here. This is lovely. Okay, let's keep going. Thank you. Three of Wands, wonderful. A new path. So this person, this Queen of Wands, is bringing, like, again, like we said, the missing piece. It allows to take a new, more accurate path that is more like, okay, this feels good. This feels right. This is how I want to wake up in the morning. This is what I want to do with my day. This is what I want to uh, finish my day with or the way I want to finish my day. Um, this feels right. This feels better. This is the three of wands. Oh, this is a good reading for you guys, Aries. So happy to see this. Okay. You want to see the table? I'll let you see the table. Okay. All right. 
See how I said it changes from the colors from here to here? Also, this could be, you know, um, the, um, the passage between Scorpio season, very watery, to Sag season, Sagittarius season, very fiery, very light, around the 2nd, 3rd of November, around the 20th of November or so. So maybe you'll either be, do, be doing this travel or movement towards this person around that time, or this person will arrive to you around that time, something like that. But this, this shift is happening throughout, at least I feel like the first half of November. Okay. Oh, oh, a hi. Oh yeah, yeah, this, this is definitely a love reading. Okay, soulmate, hi. Six of Cups, King of Wands, hi you. This is Aries. Three of Cups, Judgment, of course. Okay. This could be someone you've been with before, and if not in this lifetime, if you didn't know them in this lifetime, um, maybe past lifetime, this is a soul connection. I have here the Six of Cups and the Judgment <laughs> and the World, yeah. Yeah, this is someone from your either um, soul group or soul family or just people that are around you. It's like, it also makes you turn your back to all the options just for the one person, right? So those of you who have a lot of options or you were mingling with all kinds, with a lot of people and you were dating and you were seeing and you, go, you were going from one person to another um, and it was different but the same. And now you're just, you're just directly facing towards one person. And look, Queen of Wands, King of Wands. Yeah, def definitely love reading. Def definitely a soul union. Def definitely a, a recall. Something from the past that reawakens. Yeah, someone that you know is going to come back into your life, Aries. I don't know, this depends on your story and on your narrative. I don't know if you've been completely um, detached from this person or I don't know if you kept in touch because <clears throat> this shows me it stayed in the, in, not in the family, that sounds a little creepy, but like in, I don't know, it was around. And this is probably the realization, this could be the realization that you're potentially having of oh right yes uh-huh makes sense okay aries by far the best reading so far the funnest reading so far anyway like the drama is just being swept away and look at how much look all this is look at how much yellow and flowers and sun and light and fire are in this row. My gosh, so this is gonna be also sexy time, excuse my language. A lot of fun, a lot of, um, it's very open-hearted, very caring and loving and sweet energy. Oh, Aries, I'm very happy for you. It could be a childhood friend uh, or it could be someone you used to have a different type of relationship with and now it's different. Or, or it could be an ex, of course. It could be all of the above. Could be someone that you went through several cycles with. Two sixes, two queens, two, three. Four major arcanas. Yeah, we have a nice extended. I, I really want to finish this reading with that. <laughs> See, the judgment, it means that you can't judge yourself for, um, if it's something that you haven't seen before and you're like, why? You can't judge yourself for that because, because judgment happens only at the right time, only in divine timing. This was invisible to you for a reason. You had to go through a certain process. 
this is so funny. Um, oh, the, okay. So this morning, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine who is an Aries, um, related to himself as the invisible man. So I'm going to dedicate this video to you, Aries, to the in invisible man. Extremely visible. Look at all the sun. How can you not be visible? Sun. Huh. Never mind. I'm making my own connections. So just don't worry about it, seekers. <laughs> but it's, I, I have my, how it's, it makes me laugh. I like this headline. I'm going to call this the invisible man. The not so invisible man. All right. Oh, nine of swords, of course. Of course, there had to be a. Okay, all right. Yeah, it's not as bad as I thought. Okay. Eight of, eight of swords, nine of swords, ace of swords. Why do I love this? Because I sugarcoat? No. If you've been around, you know I don't do that. If you're new, you can check out my other videos. I do not sugarcoat. If it's sugar, it's sugar. You don't need to sugarcoat sugar, right? This is intense and sharp. And we have another eight, so we're going to add this to our extended. Those of you who read tarot, I think you, you read my mind. Look at this for a second. Bad, bad, and then what? And then what? We skip the Ten of Swords, Eight, Nine. We skip the Tens and we go back to the Ace of Swords. This is sharp salvation from the universe. This is uh, cut clean um, release. Okay, see all the, you know, she's entangled here with ropes. These hands are entangled here with ropes and with swords. This is agony. This is self-imprisonment. This is um, something that someone has been carrying or being carried with uh, for a really long time that is very painful. And it's just very painful, whatever this is. And the Ace of Swords is the universe being like enough and is cutting through these swords, uh, these ropes, I'm sorry, and gets rid of all these swords that makes the imprisonment and keeps just one sword that is accurate. And this is a very good card for those of you who don't know. This is a good card of a new beginning. This is, uh, this is liberation, okay? This is liberation. This is imprisonment. This is very harsh energy, guys. I don't know who was going through this. If it's you, do not worry. It's it's being over. If it's someone you know, tell them it's about to be over, okay? And with the judgment here, this is, um, wow. Wow, guys, this is... Someone here is being uh, freed. They're being freed and liberated. Like this, if this was a karmic cycle, if this was something that was, uh, it's very harsh energy. I'm sorry, I'm just, uh, but whatever this is, I'm so happy that I have this one because it's done. This is done. Whatever it is that you were um, held back by, you're not held back by. Whatever it is that was locking you, you're not locked by it anymore. Um, someone is being really, really, really freed. And this is m m much deeper than a 3D expression of, you know, finishing something difficult and, and having a new start. That is just the expression, the 3D expression of it. But this goes deeper. The judgment... It's, it's our, um, so in tarot, the judgment, it's everything that our soul has went through, everything that we've went through in this lifetime as well, is now awakening and reborn. This is judgment day. 
This is the rising of the dead, right? And it's over, right? Judgment in 20 and then 21. Judgment and then the world comes right after. It's the last card. So something is completely, completely done. Something that some of you were going through a lot of pain with or or who's ever relevant to this reading that you're thinking about. This was very, very, very difficult. And... This is um this is this is amazing this combination of cards I can't even Sorry. Oh. This is like uh, King Arthur taking the Excalibur out of the um out of the stone liberating it liberating its powers its powers are freed it's no longer okay someone's powers someone's ability someone's destiny someone's future someone's expansion and everything that they can and should be that was held and locked and imprisoned for i don't know how long is now being freed I have the chills. I have the chills, Aries. Please let me know in the comments how it resonated with you, if it resonated with you. Um, if not, I'm sorry, these are general readings. Uh, watch your other placements, Moon, Rising, Venus, um, and <laughs> this is a good read Aries I'm very excited for you or for for for, for everyone um, related okay um, I'm gonna give you messages from the Akashic Tarot to conclude okay but first I want to I'm sorry first I want to show you your extended if you're new this is what I do I take the um, repetitive numerical uh, aspects of the card. So first, let's do the majors. Okay, I'm just going to put them aside so you can see them, right? Great. These are the majors, and I'll address them. Now I'm going to take the repetitions. Two sixes, uh, two eights. I'm going to leave the ace right here with the magician. It's just very Arthur, Arthur, Arthurian Merlin kind of thing and I can't ignore it. I don't want to ignore it. Um, two queens. Mm, yeah. By the way, if you're wondering about the zodiacs that I have on the table, I have Scorpio, I have Aries, I have uh, Leo, I have Virgo. Um, this doesn't have to be their sun sign. This could be placements in their chart or just be behavioral aspects of those creatures. Um, creatures. I'm so sorry, people. <laughs> You're not creatures. <laughs> You're seekers. Uh, four, five, and nine. No repetition. Actually, we don't need this. We already spoke about this. So. Okay. This is the first part of the extended. After that, I'm going to clean the table and make a new shuffle and do a Celtic cross reading. Ten cards in the table. Um, and then I'll finish up with a message from the runes. From Celtic runes, speaking of Merlin. Alright. On to our Akashic Tarot. Oh, a uh, link to the extended is below in the information box. Also link to my tarot masterclass. I teach tarot. And there's also the email there, my email there, that you can uh, write me for um, information about a private reading. Global, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. So let's chat. 
Uh, okay, message for my Aries for November, please. Messages for Aries for November. Message for Aries. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of November. Aries. Um, okay. Interesting. I cut the deck now. Usually I just wait for it to fall, but I guess that's... Oh! So... Okay, I'm not going to tilt it. I'm just going to show you. I lifted up the deck. I was about to cut it, but then one card stayed beneath, so that's the card that... Yeah. Hello, another tower. <laughs> Eight of Forces. The Lightning Bolt. Okay, this is this is going to be intense. And it's another eight. Okay, let's read. Let's read Aries. Story time. Eight of Forces. Mm. Who had the Queen of Forces? Taurus. Taurus had the Queen of Forces. Um, the Lightning Bolt. A lightning bolt illuminates a stormy night sky, striking a tree down to its core. Puddles of rain pool upon the ground. This card shows that it's time of splitting apart, a time of loss, disappointment, or even metaphorical death. Metaphorical, guys. You may be feeling wounded, grieved. Well, that's very much the world, the tower, and the five of cups in the beginning. You may be feeling wounded, grieved, or gravely disappointed. The loss could be a career opportunity, romantic relationship, partnership, creative project, or friendship. At first glance, the event may seem sudden or unexpected, but in the light that flashes, we see the deep puddles of a storm that has been going on for some time. You've probably been aware of the threat or difficulty at some level, even if you were unwilling to acknowledge it before. Now it's time to accept the situation and not fight what is so. There is benefit coming, but it often takes an ending to bring forth a new beginning and a storm to clean, to cleanse the field. This is a perfect resonating message. Now, normally I don't do that. I want to ask for another one to see what comes after the Eight of Forces, aka after this tower moment that we've been discussing. It's just as this reading has clearly been shifting from this type of energy to a new type of energy. Um, so I want to see what the Akashic Terra has to conclude for us for the remaining month of November. For what follows the Eight of Forces, what follows the Lightning Bolt, please, for Aries. A message and accurate guidance and message for Aries to follow the Lightning Bolt, please. What follows the lightning bolt for November, please? Message for Aries. Sorry, guys, as long as it takes. In the meantime, you can subscribe if you want. If you haven't already. Thank you for your support. And for your comments and for your likes. Thank you. Okay. Oh, and for the private readings. I love you guys so much. It makes me so happy to talk to you guys and have an opportunity to actually have a specific narrative and not a general one and get to know you guys. So thank you for coming to me. Thank you for that as well. Okay. Whoa, that's too much. <laughs> one message, please, that follows the lightning bolt for Aries. And the Akashic Records, please. Thank you. Wow, four of keys clearing the way. Okay. Let's see, this is beautiful. Can you see this? The, the, the Akashic records are so intense, and this is so. Okay. Um, four of keys clearing the way. A man and woman have taken their carriage down a trail that cuts through a forest and continues to their beautiful home in the distance. A large downed tree lies before them, blocking their path. 
However, the young man carries an axe and is ready to clear the way. This is the tree that got struck from the lightning bolt in the Eight of Forces. See? This tree is finally fallen, whatever wasn't serving us, and now it's kind of just laying there and we need to clear it away. Okay, makes sense. Um, this card is a strong signal that it's now time to take significant action to remove an obstruction in your way. It may be in your personal life, in a relationship, at work, or with a creative project. You must be clear-headed, so be sure to temper your action with calm and forethought. If you are too urgent and excitable, you may waste your energy or even cause damage. On the other hand, if you're overly gentle and cautious, you won't clear the way completely. Be determined and strong as you work to remove the obstacle that blocks your steps. With time and your attention, the way to your dreams will open. This could not have been more clear. And also see how this is blue? And this is yellow and sunny. The symbolism here is mind-blowing and accurate and repetitive. So there's a lot of meaning into this. Yeah, Aries, this is this is powerful. This is good. This is good. Okay, I'll see you in a sec and you're extended and I will see you for the month of December. Thank you so much again for being here. You can subscribe right here. Love you much. Bye.